Psalm 85. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for being here this morning. I know there are so many places you could be, but you chose to be here. And we're so grateful. God bless you for that. Psalm 85. This is a cry in my heart, and I see the cry of God, not only in our worship team. By the way, give the Lord a hand for our God. us in. God bless you. But here's our cry. Our cry is for revival. Revival for our survival people. Revive us again. The psalmist cried out in Psalm 85 and verse 6. He says, will you not revive us again? Somebody shout revive us again. He says that your people may rejoice in you. That your people may rejoice in you. Verse number 7 says, Oh Lord, show us your mercy. And Lord, grant us your salvation. Lord, speak to us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. My goodness. You know what? We could close the service right here. We already had church. I mean, no, we just, it was just, wow. I can just stay right there. Oh my goodness. Solomon, it's good to have you in the house. Stand, Solomon. Give us a quick word. Don't preach, we have a preacher. You turn this man man loose, he's going to preach. Come on, talk to us. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I just want to share a scripture um, really quickly. Um, I'll say this when I walk when I walk through the door. I actually got a sense of an open heaven over this house, an open heaven. And um, God, I feel your presence. presence of God is here. He's here. He's here. This word is actually to the church. Um, but it's actually as a promise. I don't know if Andrew McGregor is in the building. Hey. Um, while you were leading worship, this passage of scripture came to me. It's actually for the church. But the Lord is making you a promise, Andrew. It says, And, and Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink. For there is a sound of the rushing of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elisha went up to the top of Mount Carmel. And he bowed himself down on the earth and put his face, put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And at the seventh time, he said, Behold, a little cloud, like a man's hand, is rising from the sea. And he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down, lest the rain stop you. And in a little while the heavens grew black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. And he gathered up his garments and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. The word of the Lord to you is this. This house has become a place 
where my rain will come and not only fall, but it will rest here in this house. Here's what you don't know. That young man whose name I just called has been praying for a revival for years. Andrew, the word of the Lord to you is this. Son, because you have prayed, I'm going to give you exactly what you want. I'm going to cause this place to fill. And I'm going to send you a revival that you have not yet seen. You've asked for rain. I'm going to give you an abundance of rain. You will see a rain in youth. You will see a rain in the generations ahead of you. You will see a rain in the generations behind you. You've asked for rain. Rain is yours. Rain is yours. Sir, the word of the Lord to you is this. I have taken a sword from heaven and I have stuck it in this house. The spirit that comes forth from this house will be sharp. The word of the Lord from, from, from those who stand behind this pulpit will bring a sharp word. My sword in this house will be a promise to you that you have laid yourself low and humbled yourself and I will give you the nations. So says the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
sin again. There's been so much compromise that I tell you, you, you can't even recognize if, if it's a church that preaches Christ anymore. One of the, the, the heartbreaking things that I've heard from a very large church in, in, in a certain region, they said, well, to gain even more people, here's what they've decided to do, is not mention the name of God in their house anymore, in the church. Let, let's not offend anybody. Take the cross off of the building, move the pew out, and just all kind of changes, uh, just so that they can have more people come in. Uh, how many know that's not going to do it, friend? David also recalls in the previous verses from 1 through, uh, through 3, he's, he's saying things like, uh, God, uh, let me just read some of that to you if, if it's not on the board. He said, you've already shown your mercy, your favor to this land. You've restored the blessings of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered their sins, is what David's saying. He said, you've set aside your wrath and you turn your first fierce anger away. He says, do it again, Lord. Do it again. I mean, there's got to be a cry in our hearts to say, God, you've got to touch us again. You've got to come into our house and meet with us again. We're dry, we're thirsty. There's things happening and you know what? We can't blame other people. The thing starts, hey, it starts in the house of the Lord. It starts with you and I. It starts when the people begin to pray. God's people begin to pray. Don't expect other people to do right when we can't even pray. When we can't even do right. And so, he realizes Israel is in big trouble. He realizes, as he looks around, there's a lot of idol worship going on. On his watch. He's realizing, my goodness, even in his own life, there's sin going on. How many know, he, he, he's, he takes a woman that's not his. And then conspires how they're going to get him out of the way. Put him on the front lines. Let him be killed. This is David. All of this is going on. He's looking at this and he sees, my goodness. There's no widespread revival anymore. People are not dancing in the streets. I mean, there's depression. Uh, something's odd. Something's wrong. What are we going to do? No wonder he cries out, Oh Lord, will you not revive us again? We've got to do some things. We've got to get back to some places where God can meet with us. Yeah. We're going to have to rebuild some altars. Come on, somebody. You can't just go on the way we've been going. We're going to have to pull back just a little bit. Get back on our knees. Get back to pray. Get back to asking God for forgiveness if we're going to see revival, not only in our own lives, but in this nation. Amen. You know, I've been thinking about this when you watch what's going on all around us, he's realizing even in his day something is missing, something has to be done. Today we can say the same thing, something has to be done. I mean, you really have to be blind if you can't see the moral state our nation is in. I can't speak for other nations, but I can speak for this one. I know the history of this nation. I've studied up, read it up. Thank God so many of you were born in this nation, but see, and you really didn't have any choice, and I don't know what we think of these things. It breaks my heart when I see flag burnings and, and, and all this kind of stuff going on. So September 11th, you don't want to miss our time of prayer even during that time when we come to God. The only one that can fix this, David realizes it, and we here today in 2016 will also realize this astronomical problem that we face as a nation and in our churches, there's only one that can fix this thing. It's not the government, it's not other countries, it's not our treaties or whatever. It's a God alone that can fix this mess. We've got to get him back in our homes, back in our churches. He's the only one that can do this. Stephen Alfred writes, he says, revival is the sovereign act of God in which he restores his own backslidden people to repentance, to faith, and obedience. Amen. It's a sovereign move of God. You, you can't make this happen. God has to come in and change us. Amen. He's got to come in and change the hearts of people. Amen. Amen. What Raymond was sharing and people coming out, thank God there's still people that has a heart that says, God, if you don't touch us, if you don't come in, we're lost people, we're hopeless. Amen. 
Somebody showed me, I, I don't know who it was, but I, I saw a little uh, posting on Facebook one day. Uh, I was trying to go back to define it, but it said something like this, it, you know, talking about the political, political things that's going on. And it was talking about, said, if the donkey and the elephant has kind of let you down, turn to the lamb.
can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. When our minds are transformed, how many know our body is going to follow? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So he says, repent. It's still a recipe for national revival. He says that your sin may be blotted out. And when that happens, watch this, repent, be converted, let your sins be blotted out. It's simple and easy. I can understand this. If you give me three, four things that I got, I think I could handle that. And he didn't say you got to read, you know, 77 books of the Bible. And I know that's 66, but you got to read them all. You got to know them by, you know, every, that'd be tough, man. And you got to quote it all. You got to, you know, you got to walk over mountains, crawl through it. You have to do none of that. You just have to call on me. And so, Lord, here I am. Repent, be converted. What does it mean to, mean to, to repent? I think it was Billy Graham back then that's preached and he said, repentance is, is a person walking in a certain direction. And when he repents, he stops, he turns around and walks in a different direction. It's turning from the direction you've been going. Repent, turn back to God, come back to Him. God says it's simple, you can do this. Every one of us can do this. But here's a, a blessing that comes with it. When we humble ourselves, when we repent before God, when we come to God like this, and, and we say, God, blot out our sins. I'm sorry for what I've done. He says, then times of refreshing. I love that. Times of refreshing. Not times of depressing and times of oppression. And time, we've had that. We need some refreshing. Can I get a good amen in the house? Amen. Times of refreshing may come from where? From the White House. I love grandma, but grandma can't give me this. She can, she's got good advice, but she, her advice will point you to this, that the times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. That's where it comes from. Nowhere else. Our hope is in Him. We move, have our being, everything is in Him. We flow in Him, we walk in Him. Refreshing comes from Him. Can't bypass it. Amen. There must be repentance. There must be repentance that starts at the church door, at the church house. And let it flow to your house and to the White House and to every other. See, we want them to repent, but how many know repentance starts with us, with you and I? We want everybody else to fix and change and do right, but let God start with me. I'm the one in the need of prayer. Amen? Oh, your spouse is going to agree with me. You're the one in the need of prayer. Sure. <laughs> Little repenting needs to go on. It's a good word, friend. Come back to God. Catherine Lee Bates. I was looking this up and I thought, who wrote that beautiful song? Uh, America the Beautiful. And part of the words Catherine wrote, uh, Miss Bates wrote, she said, uh, uh, God shed His grace on thee. And crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. That's the nation that she envisioned. That's the nation that God has blessed. It's not like David. He said, God, you've blessed them. You've blessed your people. I'm going to know when they were young, they called upon. 